What would you do if you saw this disaster happen in front of your eyes? The 1986 Chernobyl disaster led to the evacuation of more than 100,000 people and changed the world forever. This radioactive wasteland has been abandoned for decades now, but people are fascinated with the animals that are not only living there, but even thriving. But what is still lurking around the area of Chernobyl? Today, we explore eight unexplainable observations of animals that can survive this wasteland. Number eight, the lynx. The Eurasian lynx vanished for nearly a century from most of Europe, but it has made a big comeback in the radioactive exclusion zone around northern Ukraine. The first lynx sighting around Chernobyl began at the end of the 1990s, when Ukrainian biologists estimated that about a dozen animals might live on either side of the Belarus-Ukraine border. Given the variety of prey of rabbits, birds, mice, and especially roe deer, their calves are the lynx's favorite, it made the ruins of Pripyat a perfect habitat to survive and biologists expected the Chernobyl population to grow, which is exactly what happened. With the ability to detect mice from over 250 feet away, in 2014 the number of lynx exploded and was estimated that as many as several hundred lynx might be roaming the area. Although still considered a vulnerable species today, 90% of the world's lynx live in the forests of Siberia. The lynx is very stealthy, which has made it very difficult for scientists to study the true amounts of radiation these creatures absorb by living at Chernobyl. It will be interesting to see if these creatures begin populating around areas outside of the exclusion zone in the near future. Number 7. Wolves The trees and the forest near Chernobyl turned crimson immediately following the events of the disaster, creating a red forest. Although many animals died during the disaster, some took advantage and claimed the desolate forest for their own. Gray wolves have taken over this red forest and made it their new home, becoming the apex predator of the area. In fact, it is estimated that their population density within this zone is up to seven times greater than in surrounding reserves. The wolves are prospering not due to any mutant superpower, but because the radioactive zone now acts like a wildlife preserve and gives them free reign to hunt however they would like. They scavenge for food amidst the seasons of snow in the winter and extreme heat in the summer. The gray wolves were recently studied by researchers of the University of Georgia. The study found that many of the wolves are traveling outside of the exclusion zone, suggesting that if they come in contact with any other wildlife, they may be spreading any mutations or defects from the radiation. Due to their radioactive exposure, these wolves deliver a dangerous bite, most likely killing any prey they encounter. Let us know in the comments whether you would explore this area of Chernobyl. Number six, barn swallows. The Chernobyl disaster did not only affect land animals, but also birds, most notably the native barn swallow. Scientific research has shown that mutated genes are two to 10 times more likely to happen in swallows living within the dangerous exclusion zone than ones that are not. Some of the genetic mutations scientists have observed include albinism, which is a lack of pigment in the skin, and noticeably shorter beaks compared to the birds without radiation exposure. In 2018, these birds were studied much closer than before, and some of the results, although not shocking, are a sad sight to see. An evolutionary biologist, Dr. Timothy Musso, found that not only do these birds have a higher concentration of tumors on their brain, but also found cataracts in the bird's eyes as well. But the most shocking of all, he said, was that 40% of the male birds were found to be sterile. However, all of these are known outcomes from radiation exposure. As the population of these birds continues to decrease, these discoveries are indications that something is happening to their DNA very rapidly. And if nothing is done soon, who knows how quickly it will be until these birds are extinct. Number five, spiders. Wolves aren't the only thing living in the red forest. Spiders have also made this place their home. The effects of radiation are very prominent in these bugs. Although generations removed from the disaster, the spiders are still showing signs of radiation to this day. When these spiders weave their web, they take on a non-classical pattern and shape. Normally, spiders weave very symmetrical webs, but due to the radiation, these webs are showing the same side effects as spiders that were tested by giving them drugs. In addition to the strange shapes and patterns, scientists have observed and measured radiations in the silk they use to spin their webs, suggesting that even touching a web could be toxic for a human. 
A radioactive spider bite from one of these guys probably won't turn you into a superhero, so I'd advise you to avoid them at all costs. Number four, cows. Chernobyl was home to many farms before the disaster occurred, but since the disaster, all of them are now uninhabited. Most of these farms were for milk producing cows to help support the local Soviet economy. Unfortunately, radiation is so dangerous that it even taints the milk we drink and can cause health problems including cancers, cataracts, and digestive ailments for those who consume too much of it. Because radiation can be absorbed into the ground, much of the grass that these cows graze on is being continuously polluted. Researchers stated that the crisis can be counteracted using chemicals to kill what is in the grass, but the costs are extremely high to do so. Some cows born in the area have been documented to suffer from cleft lips and other physical deformities, a sign that radiation is still poisoning the area to this day. Number 3. Horses Swalowski's horse is not native to Chernobyl, but it was introduced to the area almost 12 years after the accident happened. The species is one of the few remaining wild horses left in the world and is currently considered rare and endangered. The horse was introduced to the exclusion zone in the hopes of increasing the types of animals in Chernobyl. But this proved unsuccessful, and with a combination of exposure to radiation and poaching, the number of horses is dwindling fast. However, the people killing these horses are most likely using them for meat to either feed their families or something else, as the areas are quite poor. But the effects of eating radioactive meat could be lethal. Even though Zvolosky's horses are currently not doing well in Chernobyl, lack of funding is causing research to fall short for these horses. Number two, dogs. Wild but not always dangerous, dogs freely roam the streets of Pripyat on a daily basis. The descendants of domesticated pets, these dogs hunt in packs and as solo survivalists in the areas surrounding the radioactive waste from the reactor. It is estimated that as many as 250 of these stray dogs roam the areas of Chernobyl. They mainly consume food scraps from visitors and have been known to dig through trash cans, hoping to discover an easy meal. Many of these dogs contain high levels of radiation in their fur, making them very dangerous for humans to pet or interact with. Due to the large outpour of people's concern for these animals, many funds have been started to help raise awareness to these puppies. In an attempt to save some of these dogs, the funds are doing anything they can to get these dogs out of harm's way. Hopefully these funds can find a way to make sure each and every one of these dogs are taken care of. And number one is catfish. Catfish have a reputation for eating anything and being able to survive anywhere, and Chernobyl is no exception. Chernobyl's cooling ponds offer the catfish populations an isolated habitat, one that's free from predators and packed with ample prey. Catfish are both active predators and scavengers, known to feed on fish, amphibians, worms, birds, and even small mammals. They are able to survive in the former cooling ponds of the reactor despite high concentration levels of radioactive materials. Although catfish are not normally resistant to radiation, these ones seem to cope with the effects of the water toxins better than humans. A strange phenomenon observed in these waters is just how large these catfish have been able to grow. These bottom feeders have almost no competition for food, allowing them to grow into immensely large sizes and live up to 50 years long. The radiation does not seem to affect these fish as negatively as the, it affects some of the other animals on our list, but I still wouldn't go out and fish for these catfish. It's amazing how many animals and creatures are able to call the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster their home. We want to thank all of you so much for tuning into this video. We will be uploading much more frequently, so please stay tuned. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our new content. Once again, thanks so much and we will see you in the next video.